to 200 meter finals. The defending champion set a good pace but faced a strong challenge from Myanmar and Thailand. Myanmar led most of the way, but the determination of Team Singapore saw them power their way right to the very end with a convincing lead to clinch yet another goal. I think we are really happy. This is like for the team. Thank you for supporting us all the way and for our federation for giving us all the support to send us everywhere. I don't really think it's a surprise. I guess we are really, really scared after the first day. So um, we just did our best and we hope for the best chemistry. Yeah. We just know each other. We've been playing together for years and it just works because we know each other that well. Sea Games debutant Mervyn Toh was up in the men's K1 200 meters. A strong start saw him lead the pack, but it wasn't until the last 10 meters that Mervyn's tie opponent upped his game and propelled past Mervyn to snatch the goal. So it was a silver for the debutant with a time of 36.99 seconds. Silver medalist from Singapore. Today I had a pretty good start because the conditions were good and I managed to pull ahead, I think, by the first 100 meters. But and in the last one quarter, I tied up a little and I fell back a little bit. The K4 Women's Finals was up next and the same team that won silver in the last games were determined to better that. However, they had the mighty Myanmar and Thailand teams to contend with. Right from the start, the pace was ferocious, leaving Team Singapore having to make an effort just to stay with the pack. The efforts were well worth it as they stayed in medal contention, but they had to settle for bronze this time. Yeah, the condition today is a lot better than the past few days. I guess we really did our best and like we were really willing the finish line towards our boat, more or less. So another fruitful day for Team Singapore in the canoeing events, bagging another goal, silver and bronze. So a fantastic job by Stephanie and Suzanne in retaining their title. This is for you, Stephanie. That's for you, Suzanne. Well oh, done hey. indeed. Yep. <laughs> the second to achieve a double goal at these games. The first being Kwateng Wen, of course, in the swimming pool last night. Exactly. So the canoeists end their campaign with two goals, two silvers and two bronzes. And that's a little short of the 2-5-3 that they got in the 2011 games. But I'm sure that they'll be hoping to make up, uh, of course, for the medals on home ground in actually two years' time. Well, if you talk about it, actually, it's less than two years that's because right. we're hosting the SEA Games in 2015 in June. No rest for the weary, especially the canoeists, but I'm sure they'll be packing in the practice sessions once they get back. They definitely will. As will the shooters yesterday. It was a bit of a disappointment for Jasmine Sir and Cheng Jianhuan, but the men are hoping to make up for it in the 50 meter pistol, and they were this morning. In the 50 meter pistol men, Team Singapore saw some keen competition from Malaysia and Vietnam. The team comprising Gai Bin, Paul Lip Meng and Lim Sui Hong put in some good effort to score an average group score of 1,637 with 26 in attendance. Gai Bin a major contributor to that with a score of 553 with a 6 in attendance. That put them ahead of the Malaysians but not enough to outdo the precision of the Vietnamese who took the goal with a score of 1,649 with 24 in attendance. A good outing for Team Singapore though as they win the silver. The individual scores of Gai Bin and Lib Ming saw them through to the top eight, but their efforts were less than desired as they only managed an eighth and ninth place respectively. So the shoot is getting off the ground with the silver and Singapore will be competing in the women's 10 meter air pistol actually tomorrow. It's all the very best to them. The hockey competition, by the way, kicked off this morning at the Yang On hockey pitch and the first opponent for Singapore was Vietnam. competition and it is the men's pool with Singapore taking on Vietnam the rest of the pool is made up from Thailand Myanmar and Malaysia and those sides will play each other over the next week or so as Singapore got off to an absolute flyer lots of penalty corners in this one you hardly it was in 13 minutes that gave Singapore the lead from the penalty corner and you can tell that Singapore have been working incredibly hard on that because they double the lead after 25 selling this time drills it home no nonsense as there was little resistance coming from Vietnam 
Good work again and sniffing in and around was Norshar to make it three in the 26th minute and another penalty corner, Abdul Latif this time. A little bit of a mix-up on that occasion, but he fired it home into the bottom corner, giving Gwen Ingall absolutely no chance. So 4-0 at half-time, and Singapore didn't stop there. Yohani was with his second of the game. A cool finish there, right into the top corner. But Singapore really, really starting to perform and play well. That one was classed as an own goal in the 49th minute before it went to 7-0. This time, Salim, it was from the penalty corner again just tucking it in and making absolutely no mistakes there was an arm that was going to be a penalty stroke and the penalty stroke awarded and absolutely no mistakes from Fyodos to make it 8-0 and the route almost complete keeping possession extremely well and using the ball wisely and a great finish it has to be said by Abdul Latif grabbing his second goal of this encounter defense just wide open and he just managed to waltz through and he managed to score yet again he got his hat trick in the 64th minute there you go doing ever so well to draw and commit Gwen in goal to that and Abdul Latif as cool as you like just tucking it into the corner to make it 10-0 Good work and a great run here from Fyodos, setting up nicely again for Rashid. That was three goals in three minutes for Team Singapore and the route was complete with just a couple of moments to go. Abdul Latif it was grabbing his fourth goal of the game, giving Singapore a 12-0 demolition. They face Myanmar on Sunday in their next pool game. Good start indeed from Team Singapore. Remember the next match against host nation Myanmar on Sunday. The same day, of course, where the Singapore football team are facing Malaysia. And the match against Brunei at the Zaya TV Stadium has just ended. The Young Lions winning by two goals to nil. Well done indeed. Exactly. And uh, you know what? You can, of course, wish them on Facebook like I know I will. I'm not sure if you know how to use Facebook, you know, in your age. Of course age. I know Facebook. I mean, it's that graduation thing, right? When you sign the autographs and all that. You do that, Mark. You do that. Look, listen, I don't need Facebook to wish Team Singapore all the best. <laughs> I'll just say, Team Singapore all the very best. That's the magic of TV, you know? That's the reason why I lie from Myanmar. Exactly, that it is. <laughs> and of course, so all the best to our athletes as well and to our viewers from Singapore. We'll see you in a bit.
Welcome back to Today at the Games. This is coming to you live from the International Broadcast Centre in Nepidor. Exactly. Swimming still to come. But first up, badminton. It was do or die for the only Singapore shuttlers left in the competition. Shinta Mulia Sari and Yao Lei had fought their way to the semi-finals of the women's doubles. Now, just one step away from gold medal contention, but in their way, of course, some very tough Malaysian opponents. In the 2009 and 2011 editions of the Southeast Asian Games, Singapore's top-ranked women's doubles pair of Shinta Muliasari and Yao Lei had to settle for silver and bronze, respectively. Would it be third time lucky for Shinta and Yao in Nepidor? This morning, the pair, ranked 16th in the world, came up against Malaysia's Vivian Carr and KY Wun in the semi-finals. In the opening game, Shinta and Yao got off to a good start, racing to a 10-3 lead. But several unforced errors by the Singaporeans allowed the lower-ranked Malaysians to settle down and eventually take the game 23-21. In the second game, Shinta and Yao gave a better account of themselves, taking an 18-13 lead before winning the game 21-17. In the rubber, with the score at 16-12 to the Malaysians, Shinta and Yao seemed to have lost the fight. The rest of the game was plagued by more unforced errors. The Malaysians, ranked two places lower than the Singapore pair, took full advantage and won the game 21-17 to book a place in the final. When starting that time, we're leading so much. When they start to catching up, then I feel like the confidence will be dropped. I feel that I play with too much anxiety. Uh, I didn't play my normal game. I felt they controlled the match more and that's why I'm not happy with the outcome. After training for a year, we lost to an opponent that we haven't lost to before. It feels like the training has gone to waste. A disappointing campaign then for Singapore shuttlers at these games as they return with just one bronze medal. Well, there we go. It's the end of the badminton campaign for yeah. Singapore. Shinta Mulia and Yao Lei will match the bronze that they won two years ago. But I think for Team Badminton, well, they'll admit that they have some work to do before 2015. I definitely think so as well. But you know what? With enough home support, I'm very sure that they're going to rise to the occasion. Yeah, that's right. Every athlete in Singapore is waiting for that home support come 2015. It's going to be an exciting time. The SEA Games back in Singapore. Exciting, especially for a certain cabinet minister. Acting Minister for Culture, Community and Youth, Lawrence Wong, visited the Athletes Village this afternoon. And in a sense, he's also a SEA Games debutant. Uh, this is my first time actually attending a SEA Games live. And, and so it's a good experience for me, particularly because we are going to host the SEA Games in 2015. So even as I go around, besides cheering for the athletes, another thing that's on my mind is to look at all the preparations that the, uh, of the organizers here have done, both in terms of the opening events, as well as the athletic, at, athletes' accommodation, the Games Village, and the organization of the Games. While the organization of the Games has impressed him, the acting minister to human touch was paramount. One thing that struck us, not just me, but many of the people in my delegation is the warmth and the hospitality of the people. Because you can pay a lot of attention to the organizational and the technical aspects, but the thing that really makes a difference is a personal touch. And I think that is one thing that struck me uh, coming here to Myanmar. Mr Wong also gave his assessment on how the athletes have been performing. We have just started the games. I think we have got off to a generally a positive start. Uh, yesterday was a good catch for us, particularly in the pool, where we had um, quite a number of gold medals and also we broke a SEA Games record. Uh, and I think that bodes well for the campaign. It are still early days, there are still many, uh, many more days to go and many more competitions to be had. So uh, I've been going around encouraging all our athletes to do their best. And if any athlete wants to know about accommodations in SEA Games 2015, the acting minister had the inside info. 
and the athletes generally, when I speak to them, they are happy with the accommodations and with the games village. Um, it's comfortable, um, the, and they are well taken care of. And uh, when we do our accommodations in Singapore, it will be different from here because here it's a specialized games village. Whereas we are doing, we don't have space to do a specialized games village in Singapore. We are doing a different concept, which is to have the athletes live within the hotels uh, in the city. So all eyes will be on Singapore in 2015 as it manages accommodation, expectations and more. I actually think the Games Village looks quite nice. Yeah, and uh, they, yeah, they are, and uh, it's they're staying, of course, in, in the heart of the city as well. In Singapore, you mean? Yeah, it's oh, part well. of the city in Singapore. Wow, shopping, so. shopping comes only after winning. That's what they say, right? That's what they say, right? Well, you have a wife, so you would know. I, I don't. <laughs> you know what wife stands for? Yeah, worries inherited <laughs> for all eternity. <laughs> All right. Thank goodness you're not in trouble. Thank goodness it didn't come from my mouth. It's time for a breather. <laughs> yes, I can hear the demands of all the way from Singapore. Where is your I mean, where is the swimming? I wanted to say, where is your wife? <laughs> <laughs> Coming to you right after these messages. Of course, we'll be right back after this commercial break.
Welcome back to Today at the Game, second day of the swimming competition and with three gold medals and three bronzes and a SEA Games record in the back from day one, the swimmers were looking to push themselves even farther. Exactly, uh, two swimmers getting a second chance today, Kwa Ting Wen and Amanda Lim. The 100 meter freestyle was run again this evening as there was a bit of a faulty start device last night. So could they make it good this time around and did Joseph schooling of course, every time everyone's on his lips, uh, can he get his first individual gold medal? Well, let's have a look. Remember, she swims in lane number six. Jasmine Alcaldi was the winner last night. Swims in lane number five, side by side with her. She actually sliced through the Singaporeans to get home first. It's a very good start in lane number three this time out. And Jira Suisa are showing how she would have done it if that buzzer didn't sound twice last night. Quarting went slightly in front of Nathanan. Jasmine Alcaldi coming on strong. Quarting went reaching out. Quarting went going home. It's Nathanan Jungkrakrang who touches home first. She was fourth last night and second chances don't come too often. She has reclaimed and defended her SEA Games crown. So she takes the most of the second chance in these 2013 SEA Games to the gold medal. Pity for Jasmine Alcaldi though. From goal she's been relegated to bronze because of this re-swim. Una in one, Ching Huang of Malaysia in two, Keith Walk the defending champion in three, Fauzi the fastest in Southeast Asia this year in four, Danny Yo the silver medalist from the last SEA Games in five, Fauzi Triadi is looking strong, extending his strokes right now, kick rate is absolutely superb as his thrust forward just moves him further and further away from the field, Fauzi Triadi is going to touch home first, he's going to win goal, Indonesia have one goal in the 100 meters freestyle, Danny Yo can only clinch the bronze medal, the defending champion has been relegated to second spot. Indonesia's first gold medal since 2005 and the legendary Richard Sambera won the last of his seven titles. Danny Yo relegated from a second to a third at this time out. Women's 400 meter freestyle. They got off cleanly, quickly. Reina Sami of Indonesia is in lane one as compared to the average of 71. 0.5 strokes per minute at Srifa Nonton is swimming. Srifa Nonton slowly creeping up, doing superbly well. Heading home strong in the 400 meters freestyle for women. That is the SEA Games record. It's not put up there. It's 410.75 by Ku Chai Lin. And it will be 414.23 out of the SEA Games record. But Benjafong Srifa Nonton has one goal for Thailand. Lynette Lim, bronze and a silver from tonight. Well, she wanted two goals, of course. Defense 205, men's 200 meter individual. Which is probably the weakest of his discipline so far. Good start off the blocks by Joseph Schooling straight away with the butterfly kicks, making sure already that he gets a head start amongst all the teammates. Dui Khoi of Vietnam. Schooling turns in first position. Look at the time on the clock. 0.25, 2. seconds, uh, 2.53 seconds ahead of Tran. Joseph Schooling is gunning for that. He is trying to dip below two minutes again. Can he do it? Joseph Schooling is going to break the SEA Games record. He's not going to go below two minutes, but it's two minutes, 0.82 seconds. JIS just incredibly superb. One of the biggest gaps I think we've seen so far right here at the SEA Games for swimming. The, gold medal is the schooling dynasty began in 2011. Um, physically wise, yeah, as you can see, I'm not in the best shape, you know. Um, we've been, this is my first long course meet after, um, since Barcelona. So obviously I've been um, racing long course. Um, really affects my performances. And, you know, 2 double L. Um, times aren't really fantastic at all. Really disappointed with them. But the most important thing is um, I'm two for two, um, two records also, and that's the bright side. He might be pushed hard by the Malaysians in the 4x100 meters freestyle tomorrow and also on the final day by the Indonesians in the 4x100 meters medley relay. Silver medalist earlier on in the 100 meters freestyle swimming in the first leg and she's up against the ties in Jinjira Sri Siad. 
Ching Wen slightly ahead, half a body length ahead of Jinjira. They've got such a strong squad, this one. All of them just a second apart from each other, their personal best times. Ching Wen, Amanda, Mylene and Lynette. So you're talking about consistency, you're talking about times that are close to one another. That's the reason why they'll win. You look at the others in the race, you've got Thailand, about two, three seconds difference between Natanak, who's just one in the 400 meters of freestyle, who's the second leg swimmer. Malaysians have got Erica in the pool for them. They're in fourth position at the moment. This might be a very close, very, very close lead. Singapore looks like it's too little, too late. What a shock this is. 3.45.73. I don't think the SEA Games record will be threatened, but Singapore's dominance in this event has been taken down by the ties. The shock of the night. And Natanan Junkrajang it is, the 100 meters freestyle champion. And uh, here we have the final results. Thailand coming in first, 3.47.66. A girl's being awarded the silver medals, of course missing out on the gold, but not for the lack of trying. Well, it's a shame, isn't it? That four by hundred meters freestyle. It really there. was. I mean, it's like there were such hot favorites. Their times were so yeah. good. But Joe Schooling, I mean, the fact that he said that he's not really in good shape and still clocking those times, <laughs> it's absolutely amazing. He'll be in the race tomorrow again. But first, let's look at other results from Team Singapore right now. Divian? Uh, exactly. The equestrian dressage team were just over three points shy of a silver that was won by Myanmar, settling for the bronze with a total score of 187.343 points. Ang Bun Chin and Lim Chun Kiet missed out as gold medal contenders with a semi-final loss to their opponents from Myanmar and end their campaign with a bronze in the snooker's doubles. Now let's have a look at the medal tally. Myanmar still topping the table with 26 goals, but there's a chasing pack that's not very far behind. Vietnam the closest at 22 goals, Indonesia and Thailand level, and Malaysia pulls ahead of Singapore today with Singapore just taking in two goals. So Team Singapore at eight goals, seven silvers and 16 bronzes. Okay, if you didn't manage to catch the Singapore vs Brunei football match that was played this evening, then tune in at 11pm on Channel 5 for the delayed telecast. Exactly. Uh, a bit of a spoiler alert though, if you don't want to know the score yet, you need to <coughs> turn nil. the volume, no, <coughs> turn the volume down. I'm actually going to give you a thumbs up to tell you when we've announced the score. Alright, 2 nil. Singapore won. Right. You just killed it. <laughs> just... Okay. <laughs> okay, thumbs up, thumbs up. Okay, next match, Malaysia and the Lions are going to need all your support. You have to join us tomorrow, of course, for more Team Singapore action. And here's a bit of a hook, okay? Tao Li, Joe Schooling, again, both in the 100-meter butterfly event. I'm going to be there. Shooters on the range, the basketballers on the court, cyclists on the hill. Oh, it's all action-packed right here in the capital of Myanmar. Yeah. So join us tomorrow. We're coming to you at 11 p.m. instead of 10. My name is Divian. And I'm Mark Richmond. It's Goodnight Singapore from Nepidor.